thing. So this is what I was talking about. So you just go right here. You're just going to go share screen, grab. Not that we're going to grab this guy right here. So we're going to grab this guy right here and okay. go oh, okay. down to okay. this and get this guy right here and ready oh. for it. Uh, yeah. Oh. Are you saying Cinema. you want to see the real eye? Cinema. 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 That's serious. Cinema. Can I put on my face? I, I don't. <laughs> I feel like this is getting very up close and personal. All right. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, Burt <laughs> I, I saw Wallace Shawn die. Wallace Shawn is dead. <laughs> You're a jabroni. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday Hi, night. Everyone. It's what the show. And what the world needs now is love, sweet love. My name is AJ Lancaster. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the co-hosts. <laughs> I am curb your enthusiasm tonight. Because uh in honor Ayo. of the Curb Your Enthusiasm season finale that took place a couple days ago, and Rob Fishbeck and I reacted to that. Those videos were actually, like, really successful somehow. It was literally an hour, hour and a half of oh. Rob and I. We wouldn't even talk about the show. We just <laughs> talked, like, random stuff that, like, conversations that came out of the show. And some of those videos got, like, hundreds of views. It didn't even yeah. make any sense. Your finale got, like, 752. Uh -huh. Uh, holy moly get it juice juice you're a celebrity now i hope yeah. you and cousin rob don't forget about the little people when you make it big yeah right and you know and what we even do yes is they you collect oh, no. but was that mike yes we we start collecting phone numbers and so all you need to do is put your cell phone number into the comments and we'll make sure to send you plenty of spam yes and um 100%. yeah we're also gonna need those uh those three funny numbers on the back of your credit card. Um, Did I tell you guys about when I <laughs> if you showed you up to the Rob's? Number yeah, the last digit. Did I talk on the show how like the story what of when I went to phone? Rob's, Rob Fishbeck's in person the other like the other week? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Did I talk about that? Yeah, I like how you said in person. Now we have oh, not yeah. that. We briefly, have briefly. We, yeah. we missed a week, so I missed, Maybe I I missed hanging that. out with you, John, on Because he, oh yeah, because it was during March, so we wouldn't have talked about it. Because we, I showed up, the first thing he does is yell at me for not parking in the driveway. That's like <gasps> the Midwest thing. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, 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 yeah, at not parking in the driveway. No, and in the like first me. 30 minutes, he was just telling the story about this, like, uh, chipmunk oh, that had got loose in his garage. Like that was just the whole first interaction. Then we went down and actually shot the show, but it was just awesome. And I met his grandma. And then y'all were like, "Oh, the nice gonna, person you gonna <laughs> You got to meet grandma. Yeah, oh grandma goodness. Fishback. So I guess cousin, my cousin's grandma. Grandma's which I don't know what that makes her. Oh Your my goodness, grandma. Some kind of relation. Grandma's cousin removed. Yeah, Grandma yes. removed. Oh my God, what an honor! I want to meet Grandma Fish. My God, she's in like an epic, awesome great. lady. She was awesome. She's ever in the show. Oh, did she Dumb make? Down. I don't know what's like a good Midwestern delicacy: cheese, tater tot squirrel. casserole. Squirrel? I don't think they use squirrel oh in Midwest. <laughs> yeah, did yes. she make tater tot casserole? You're like, we've all had some tater tot casseroles in our day. I can't say that I have, but I feel like I would thoroughly enjoy it, to be honest. Yeah. You know it what the basic like instruction would like. is? Or? Would y'all like to hear? Yeah, what, it, what, what is the basic uh, tater tots, I'm assuming? Cheese, so, yeah. probably, correct? Yep. So it's cheese on top of tater, tater tots for the top layer. 
And then it's um, mushrooms, uh, mushroom soup, okay. and and your protein of choice mixed with green beans below that. Okay. That's interesting. That's hmm. I'm feeling mm -hmm. slightly not as into it now, but maybe it's better than it sounds. Well, <laughs> I'm sure it probably does taste. Does it taste good? Are you a fan? Um, you can put enough hot sauce on anything. On anything. <laughs> and it'll yeah, you'll get some good flavor. That's you know what, that's a really yeah. fair point, actually. Um what my dog is doing. Hold on, Luna. Hey, stop it. Would you like to hear about how I got a gambling? addiction this past week oh hell yes please <laughs> just kidding i'm not really an addict but like give me a little bit of power and a little bit of money and mm -hmm. i'm i'm just like betting it all i'm like alabama to win this game in the final four fuck it let's go roll it um that did not pan out but <laughs> i did i did good i ended up up by the end of the weekend so as a first time sports gambler i mean if that kind of sports gambling obviously fantasy football sports gambling but like of a different caliber like it's a different it's, it's like a legal thing kind of i guess um this kind of sports gambling was my first go and i'm a fan <laughs> so if, for, for those who don't know like the typically if you're a first timer on most of these apps they give you what's called bonus bets which basically are just free bets free money and if you win you get to keep the money from the winnings, you don't get the like the bonus bet part of it back. But so what you do, you get you got six or seven free bonus bet. So it's like you pick three that seem like quite the obvious are gonna happen and then take a shot on the other ones. So regardless, mm -hmm. you're still gonna wind up making money. So true. Bethany puts down a couple of bets on the, the final four games, wins those, and then takes a couple of gambles, and those didn't pay off, but she still wound up putting like twenty dollars into yeah. the account and making like over a hundred. I was betting on oh. the Padres. I was like, let's put some baseball into yeah. them. The maybe the Padres was like the last game that hadn't started. So she's like, Oh, they're slight underdogs. It, it's plus money. Let's bet on that. <laughs> and you know what? The Padres came through for me. So, you know, oh, what? Yeah. You Padres. we appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate that victory. We appreciate those runs. I think it was like a four nil game. Yeah. No, um, it's not that Jabroni ball. Listen, nil works in all sports. Okay, I think you, I think nil is just a funner way of saying zero. That's your brownie ball. All right. Well, yeah. anyways, it was a great time. Um, also, Kyle Schumacher, you're not going to watch this, but if you ever do, admitted basically that he stole aspects of everyone's wedding that he was ever in for his wedding, and I respect that. Here's to okay. a beautiful ceremony. He made a speech that because he's the male version of Twenty Seven Dresses. Yeah. So he's like, when you've been in so many so many weddings you can just steal all the good ideas and put them into yours true <laughs> that's good yeah that's good. Wait, hey. like you're welcome for did, did his wedding involve jake yakavetta with a lightsaber <laughs> no, no shockingly uh, maybe, it uh, was early april at a botanical garden though so i saw some similarities hmm. no lightsaber sadly there, there was a big circle at the there end there was a big circle that was sing along at the end um yeah, lots of lots of good. There was a photo booth which we did not have. Very ridiculous for absolutely no. But we did kind of a photo booth. I was like, listen, I know these are pretty penny, so I'm gonna take full advantage of it. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Was he? He's not related to Skip Schumacher from the St. Louis Cardinals, is he? No. Is he there? I believe there? they're distant cousins. Yes. Not related to Michael so. Schumacher, the Formula. I don't even think it's the same spelling, but. Problem. Well, I can't say if it is or not. Um, he, I, think he, he Skip all, Schumacher, I think Skip Schumacher, Schumacher might be a coach for the related. Padres now, actually. Oh, so it all ties back together. He came through for me this weekend. Oh, boy, Skip. So one thing that comes full circle to what the show Oh, no, as, Marlins. Never mind. Sorry. Never mind. Um, as part of his um, the wedding gift, I gave it to him at the bachelor party. I have forever held on to one of the old Hoyt's vests from the movie theater. Hi everyone. So I worked at the movie. So I gave it to him at the bachelor party, and he like flipped his lid because he was like, "Oh my god, how do you still have this?" You know, losing his mind. Also, what I thought when I first found it in his closet a few years back, I was like, "You have this," and it wasn't even his, but a laugh. It's Josh, the guy who tried to upsell in the movie in the theater. It was <laughs> his. So <laughs> you busted it out for us. Yeah. So. Uh, I gave it to him at the bachelor party two weeks ago. So we go to the wedding and we get back to the hotel afterwards. And like, we got the hotel bar to um, 
to stay open late for us. And he comes Great down. Bartenders, by the way. He comes Real down. Quick, under our... 10 minutes, Jake Alcavetta mentioned twice. <laughs> okay. I had to get it uh, after 10 minutes. Go. So, uh, anyway, he comes running downstairs. Like, we all get back. We go up and get fully changed. Most people actually just went straight to the bar. We get fully changed. We come back. He doesn't have his vest from the wedding on. He has the fucking Hoyt's vest on. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yes. and you know what? He rocked it. Oh. He done rocked it. Um, oh. What was I going to say about something really? Oh, what I was going to say is we respect people who work in hotel bars, obviously, because our dear friend Justin the Juice does. And I'd like to say that we took good care of our bartender all weekend. It was the same guy who was working very hard. I was like, does this guy ever get a day off? I don't know. He made me delicious espresso, espresso martinis, martinis three nice. nights in a row. What a ledge. And as far as I know, Martha Stewart never stole his butler, but I cannot confirm nor <laughs> deny that. So we had a very sweet interaction with him the, the last night. Uh, like yeah, the Sunday night was pretty empty. We stayed longer than I don't think anybody else at the wedding stayed that night. We had some other friends in town that we were able to meet up with. We actually yeah. met up with some Schmodown people. Yeah, we got to see the Shawshank, oh. including the little bit Shawshank. Oh, oh wow. The little, the little girl. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I'm obsessed with her. So, uh, but. We go out with another group of friends and we come back to the hotel. They drop us off. It's like, yeah, we'll go sit down in the lobby. And he comes up to us. And, like, we we weren't sitting at the bar. We were at a table that was, like, adjacent to it. And he comes up to us. I guess because we weren't with everybody else, he didn't recognize us at first. He comes up to us, can I get you some drinks? They make a really mean old-fashioned. <laughs> we're like, sir, you are a legend. I'm like, sir, you have made me a really mean espresso martini the last two nights in a row. Let's get it. Let's keep it going for a third night. I kind of miss God. just ending my night with an espresso martini now, if I'm being real honest. And I, I had the beans from the like full yeah. blown. It really was a very legit. I like to consider myself a bit of a connoisseur of espresso martinis, and this one was like, it was good. Like the, so, the Tyson's Corner Marriott, I don't think, is up with the Alaska Caucus, but mm -hmm. it, it's hard like to top the Alaska Caucus. You know, it's it's definitely not on the villains list. You know, it would be teetering with the heroes list, but. The bartenders at the uh, Tyson's Quarter Marriott, I say they go on the heroes. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, mean, we're not going to remember this a year from now, but <laughs> I, but I will respect them, and also I'll remember how great his espresso martini was. So, one hundred percent. There was four bartenders trying to serve like for hero of the of year. Since the way that we're changing the bracket for next year, I think he, I feel like they could definitely be up there. Sneak in there, yeah. Also, yeah. we passed a sign that it was something like Scoochville, and I was like, Scooch, Scotch. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I got very excited. Also, can we acknowledge? I don't think like we didn't really talk about it too much in the chat. His mom tweeted. No! Yeah, replied no! to the tweet. Y'all, Scooch got <laughs> himself replied. Scooch got his tweeted. mom. Scooch got <laughs> replied. Who was hating and mom. being like, "Oh, he is not worthy of being a hero." His fucking mom replied his to our tweet. Okay, replied. so like, if that isn't proof that he is worthy of hero of the hall of fame i don't know what i truly don't know what it is to be so, honest i'm i'm dropping some pictures in our group chat right now deciding if i should share these on on the show um i, I was also at a wedding i was at my sister's place in maryland um oh yeah uh for her wedding this uh this past week and my sister has um, she's a big Formula One fan, and she has a professional racing simulator, like the one that the the Formula One drivers use when they can't drive because they're limited to so many hours the of track time per like week. The basis of this movie that came up with Jeff. So yeah, the the, the, the Gran Turismo one. She has one in her house. <laughs> the Gran Turismo. My brother got in it, double fisting beers. Nice. I see this. Yes. Do I, I share see. these photos? Yes, one hundred percent. Also, what beer is this? It has like the Maryland flag on it. It's a uh, so um, oh, it's oh, Bohe uh, Bohemians. Natty Boat. No, it's Natty uh, it's Natty Boat. Uh, Guinness Baltimore Blonde. So it's an exclusive Guinness Blonde Ale that's only sold in Baltimore. Interesting. It's, I, it's really good. I, 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 oh, I yeah, yeah, now that I drink a drink this that. weekend. Also, yeah, what is really going good. on on this cat post behind it? Is that poop? Is my question. Let's see here. <laughs> no, that's. I hope not. It's probably like a tree, <laughs> right, or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think that's. But here. Do I? I yeah. 
I, I, I got to put Juice, can you add the fiction that I just said? The set, well, you can put both of them if you want, but the second one in particular. The set is true. Oh, sure. Yeah. Us sure. discussing our, the wedding we attended this past weekend. Juice, you attend any wedding? Did you bartend no, any uh, Next, no, next uh, month, though. Uh, oh, May, May 4th. May 4th. Uh, I my friend's getting married. Yeah. Oh, it's so the, one of the first weddings where I don't have a role. I mean, I'm, I'm nice. a groomsman, but I'm not like, I'm not a DJ. I'm not bartending. I'm not. You uh, are always just a very busy bee. At I'm, these just, weddings. I'm just like, I'm just a groomsman. I don't I mean, have to give a speech. I'm not a best man. Like, I just, it's been a while since either of us have been to a wedding that we didn't have a specific, like one of us wasn't in. Yeah. 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 I mean, the hardest role ever was bride. Right. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we have been in the last two things we have been to either one, one of, of us, us has been, been in, in it. it yeah and it is weird when you're traveling for the wedding and you don't like know a ton of people and you're like significant others in the wedding because then you're like oh like what do i do during this time um but honestly it was very nice i watched you've got mail and painted my nails and like chillax while he was off doing like groomsman duties and stuff also, can I share with you all? Um, are we have are the pictures ready, or do we have a moment oh, for me no. to vamp? Uh, yeah, we got it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna share with you all. Speaking of of weddings, um, I'm gonna show you. So this year for oh, here we go. We got we have the photo. Okay. Pause. I'll pa I can pause my oh, story just, and we can. That's my older brother. <laughs> Double fist and beers. How well did he yes. do in this simulator? Just oh, curious. terrible. He could not stay on the road <laughs> at all. That's what I wanted to hear. I yeah, think double fist and beer probably would lead to that. Like, I'm not an expert by any means, but. Well, it's a race car. It doesn't have power steering, so it simulates that. It just mm. could not. It was just like, you know, if you get like an F-150 in here, I bet I could do great. <laughs> I, like, I'm the, <laughs> the, like, usually the least adept at that sort of thing. I kicked his ass by, like like 45 seconds after he could finally complete a lap and he was like mm -hmm. trying to complete a lap for like a half hour before he did it i just <laughs> try one lap and i'm like 45 seconds faster than that i respect that on I a three minute that. lap course so we're gonna circle back for going we've talked about this on stream before but i found something on ebay Yes. So in, in the spirit of weddings, we last week celebrated our third wedding anniversary, which is why, of course, we did not have a what the show last week. And um, so Mike and I kept it pretty low key this year. I bought some like Jim Gaffigan tickets. We went to go see Jim Gaffigan like a month ago. That was a, kind of an early anniversary gift. His anniversary gift to me was taking me to this very lovely restaurant in town. It's, it's quite famous. The old pink house. Um, it's like the go to special occasion restaurant. It was amazing. Um, this beautiful, like, historic house that they turned into a restaurant. It's haunted. These poor servers. It's haunted. Everything is fantastic. haunted. Um, but anyways, so Mike wanted to to add a little extra special something to our anniversary. A little bonus gift. So I had something to open. Since, obviously, a restaurant, you can't really open. <laughs> also, bless you, had yeah. an espresso martini there. It's been, a, like, a full week of espresso martinis, y'all. Let me tell <laughs> you. Bless you. Yeah. But, anyways. So Mike put on a jacket. Is I, yep. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> he's got to put on a flannel because he's got the sneezes. Uh, I was like, what's on the back of your shirt? I didn't realize there was like a symbol there. I thought it was it had something on it. Anyways, yeah. so right. as you gentlemen may know, we are big podcast arrived fans. And so much so that we saw them when they um, came and did a live recording of their podcast in Orlando a few years back um, when we still live there. And one of the things that came up on that recording was um this michael beisner baseball card and so mike did put a bid on it this the light is like catching it glare that's where the for it um so mike did put a bid on it um the guy counter offered because mike's like okay i'm gonna put this in the guy's like how about this he, he had it up for eight dollars i counter offered for three and, and i offered three five. and he counter offered five i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> Michael Beisner, Michael Beisner baseball card, it's, and he gave us some freebies. Well, and as if he knew that Mike was a Mets fan, it's Ron he's, Darling. He's a new Ron it's Darling. Same card. Oh, nice. We opened we open up the envelope and we see two Ron Darling cards. I'm like, did I order the right thing? Yeah. So for five dollars, <laughs> you can get Michael Beisner and two, two count them, two Ron Darling. And I think these cards. are from eighty. Nine. Mm -hmm. These are pretty old. That's so awesome. quality content. 
<laughs> you think if you like if you took it at eight, he would have thrown in five Ron oh, Darling okay. cards? You know what he may have. So he had them kind of like surrounding the the pack, like as a um, uh, like for, for protection. Like these were cards; these were like burner cards, you know. That so I looked them up and like they actually like like have an actual face value of about a dollar twenty five each. So I mean, I'll call that a win. Yeah. This is one that I could have told you. That. <laughs> no, um, no. Okay. Honestly, I'm So this is no my... one asked for your opinion, Jake. I don't recall asking for your opinion. <laughs> so this is uh, my buddy. Uh, his name is Sonny, but we all call him. St- uh, he goes by Stu, and we all call him the Stu Balls Omnicore in uh, celebration of the life and times of Tim, which AJ you still have to watch. Uh, nice. But. This is actually part of a larger picture. Stu was really feeling it. Stu was by far the drunkest person at the wedding. Well, you said Christy was. Well, Christy was really, really drunk too. But we'll we'll go with Stu for the sake of the story. Um, So that picture is taken. um, We actually got thrown out of my buddy's suite for being too loud and had to go to somebody else's room that we knew was between two of our other rooms. It was not me. I I know for a fact it was not me. It was probably these two walls, Omnicorp. But these two balls, Omnicorp, at some point between going to those two rooms, lost his car key, his uh, keys to his apartment, and the next day spent the rest of the day trying to retrack where his keys were and he, so he <laughs> enter his actual apartment. That is Dude. an all-time drunk photo. Dude, was it? He, you oh, can tell. Oh, so good. You can really tell that he is in one. the suit still. He's not taking the suit. The off. buttons are like kind of holding on for dear life at this so point. This is night. This is night. At, like. Night of the wedding, all after. Yes, this is the after party of this the is, wedding. So this is after the bar had shut down. So this is past midnight at this point. Yeah. Sure. I love when somebody's so drunk that they refuse to be in focus. Oh, it's so good. Open <laughs> bar, bar at the hotel lobby, and now they're upstairs still consuming alcohol. So there was he, five of us who stayed up till close till two in the he morning. Had a lot. He was one of them. I went to bed at the end of the bar portion. So Bethany went to sleep evening. like I'll say twelve fifteen. Ish. I was, I think, later than that. 12.30-ish? 12.30-ish, yeah. So I stayed for the after-after party. Uh, I think I got back to the hotel room around 2.30 in the morning. Uh, this is after we got kicked out of the suite that somebody had bought specifically for us to party afterwards. And then had to go to our other friend. Uh... That's awesome. <laughs> and this affects me how... Uh... Also, like, I don't have WWE connections, okay? It's fine. It, it, we'll say that for another time. Uh, but still, um, the uh, the after after party's going, and we wind up, and this was something that was kind of funny. Is we wind up in our buddies that, where the hotel block, like the actual hotel block of rooms, is. So we're like, all right, we know we find there because it's all, everybody who's in that hallway is, you know, part of the hotel, and it's literally next to the bride and groom's room. And they're like, we don't care, you know, you can go party. We get in there, and the first thing I say is. Why is your room smaller than ours? Apparently, Bethany and I, despite playing the employee rate, yeah. got an upgraded room, which was kind of like so. Our room had like a like a futon slash couch that had like a little extender seat at the end of it. That like we probably had we brought people in, we probably could have comfortably comfortably sat like six or seven people. We're trying to cram nine people into this room that just has a king bed. <laughs> Conversely, so I was in I was in Maryland. So in, where were you guys again? Tyson's Corner, Vienna, Virginia, Virginia. Yeah, he just throws so, that out like everyone knows where Tyson's Corner is. So I was in <laughs> very swanky area. Maryland, so I was across Maryland from you guys. Um, yeah. you were on the other side of the state. When you saw but uh, yeah, there we go. For Thank our you. wedding weekend. We were all. <laughs> See Maryland and Virginia touching there. Um, That's cool. true. They're Fairly so close. close. Yeah. AJ, yeah. Um, we were like a state away this entire time and we didn't even know. We could yeah. all met up. So, if he was on the far end of Maryland, though, that would have been pretty far. Well, hard. yeah, but you know. <laughs> so the night of my sister's wedding, um, so we're, we're staying at her place for this entire trip, right? Right. Um, and I'm sleeping on the couch. My They have two spare bedrooms, but I'm just like, I'll take the couch. Have my brother in one, my mom in the other. Do it all, everybody's comfy. So 
you, you saw my brother. <laughs> so he's up. That was him at midnight, about three o'clock, where everybody's finally going to bed. So I can go to bed at this point. And I'm sleeping on the couch. So I'm sleeping on the couch in the living room, which is kind of adjacent to an open area kitchen. And he decides he has the midnight munchies, goes back out immediately after everybody goes to bed <laughs> to microwave some, uh, to just get some a bag of tortilla chips, throw a bunch of them on there, microwave cheese on top of them. Call it nachos. He, he's that Step level of drunk. Style. Yep, that level of drunk, right? During this time, he asked me if I've ever seen Homeland, and I said no. And then he goes into well, a five-minute rant about how Homeland fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and he's losing track halfway through what he was talking about. It's so great. Just one of those things like, hey, you ever watch Homeland? Nah. Well, let me tell you about it. Stress talking about it's so great, but then it falls off and losing track is so great. One of the just greatest drunken states you can ever see somebody in when you're not really like I can't drink to a point of being like buzzed. Mm -hmm. so. I am just a big uh a fan of of, I just feel like wedding drunken shenanigans are like the best drunken shenanigans because like usually they're good natured. Like no one's getting angry drunk at a wedding. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like people are usually like in good moods, good spirits, and it's just like fun and games. I had a funny thing happen to me at the wedding, which was like completely out of left field. So I think I've told this story on here before last year at my fantasy football draft, but there's the one guy who always just drafts all the Philadelphia Eagles and Tom Brady. And uh, he was sitting at our table and like that last year I took the Eagles defense just to see what he would do. Cause I was one pick before him and he like got totally confused and didn't know what to do and threw his whole draft off. He comes up to me. He's like, can I talk to you in the corner? Can I talk to you in the corner? He got real serious. <laughs> he got real serious. Yeah, real serious. And he's like, I just wanted to say, I felt, I'm so sorry. Did I offend you at the draft? Like I felt so bad about how I treated you. I'm like, I was laughing internally about just causing chaos. I'm not mad whatsoever. And I'm getting the most unnecessary apology of all time. <laughs> he, he really, he's been thinking about that now for months. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. Apparently that was simmering with him. And like, I'm not, I never once felt resentment whatsoever. Now, <laughs> yeah. and has the flannel yeah. helped your sneeze? I haven't sneezed. He hasn't sneezed. It's science, y'all. <laughs> it's only weird if it doesn't work. debatable on whether or not it works yeah it's oh science. yeah there we, there we go that's the groom of the weekend from md 2020 to you know wedding shenanigans it was a it was a very good time um by the way yes bum bumwine.com did their march madness bumwine bracket and old english won old english 840s won it's, that's correct. I think people are moving that. That's hmm. Huh. Yeah, Do people I, vote on this? Who voted on this? <laughs> I I don't know. We should have been consulted. Uh, we really should have been consulted. Is... Hello, we get the code Jabroni, Bumwine Jabroni for five percent off your next order of already cheap booze. And they didn't even consult us, the Bumwine experts. It's honestly very rude of them. So, yeah, the final four was um, Four Loco Jungle Juice, oh, Old, okay. oh, Old English 800, uh, Miller High Life, and Thunderbird. And like Thunderbird Old and... Um, one. Are you hearing this, sir? Old English? One, the bumwine.com. Yeah, it, that, it was bullshit. Why did Old English win? Like, it's not like anything that should have won that bracket. Old English is like a fairly <laughs> respectable bumwine. Yeah, so, like, I think of anything in the in the malt liquor, I mean, I, steel reserve, I think we're going for truly terrible. Uh, I but... just, so I'm on Bumwine's website right now, and they have a poll section. And I mm. thought that's where I was going to find that, but not. But I found something better. They have, a, like, four questions. Just which is the king of Bumwine's? Yeah. Is Boone's Farm a Bumwine? And then... Which U.S. urban areas bums are the most grizzled? <laughs> There's like 15 different cities. <laughs> Hit me with them. Hit me with them. Like, I need to know. 
Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Houston, Jacksonville, Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, Memphis, Milwaukee, New Orleans, uh, New York, Philly, Phoenix, San Diego, San Francisco, Washington, D.C. And then the last question, two options. Who would you rather look like for the rest of your life? Big Bird from Sesame Street or Grimace from McDonald's? Grimace, the Grimace. <laughs> um, um, so that's a great question. The, the bum tier list, though, do I smell, or sorry, the bum rankings, do I smell our next tier list? Ooh. I'd be down for that. I'm into it. I'm into it. I need to try probably so, some more, but what? I'm into it. By the way, I, I wanted to point this out because I, I there's probably a little bit of crushing the streams here. Bumwine Bob is the one who did everything on Twitter, is not affiliated with bumwine.com. He's got his own thing. Oh, however, okay. however, bumwine.com uh put up their first thing on Facebook in years because of the TikTok thing with the the, the Gen Zers trying MD2020. It's the first time they've posted in years, and it was last well, week. TikTok finally did something good. <laughs> um, so Bum Bumwine Bob, do we need to have words with this man? Is that what I'm hearing? So Bumwine Bob, uh, he has a pretty big, like not a huge Twitter following, bigger than us, but like he's you know he's on there a lot. He does a lot of stuff about oil. Anytime there's a new flavor of MD2020 or something like that, he's always posted about it. He did this uh, March Madness with the Bumwines. And uh, I don't. Maybe we should contact that dude and see if we'll yeah, come up the show. Yeah, get him to the show. <laughs> yeah. Bum and Bob, if you're open, we are excited to have you on. Bum and Bob. Uh -oh, oh, that dude uh -oh. is creepy. Oh, is we creepy. don't like. Oh, we not like Bum and Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's it. Okay, so wait. Bum and Bob is not canceled. He's okay, as far as we know. <laughs> I mean, he says he's four loco sponsored. I could tell the story. Yeah. I mean, I the first time I was ever drunk was from four locos at a yes. bowling alley. Was it the yes. old four loco or the current four loco? It was so this was 2006, uh, 2017. Oh, that's oh, current. the news. Probably current. Yeah. yeah, that's when they, they had to like regulate it. I was gonna say, when did they regulate it? Uh, it that I want to say like 2012 ish. Oh, okay. I think it was 2010. Oh, yeah, maybe 2010. Oh, yeah. I don't think I ever legally purchased the old four. I did the old four loco. <laughs> I, Sparks and four loco back in the day. I'm telling you, okay. Um, Sparks, we, I, I know we we heard some spark stories from you. Did I tell you guys about how? I kept on buying them thinking they were energy drinks when I was underage yeah, and yeah. they just sold them yeah, to me. Yeah, you did tell it. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. I don't know if your science is working. Wait, so you were at a bowl? Wait, how did you get, did you legally get these for a little? Did you all like you went? Oh, um, no, no, no. So. He needs another. My. You're so yeah. hot. Okay. I was like helping out. I was like doing a favor or like helping out or we were like we painted like a we painted my one of our friends girlfriend's sister's like new house we like painted that and i was kind of showed up more towards the end and so they were all mad at me because like i was getting in on like the fun like free drinks and food even though i like wasn't there helping mm. out as long but like it wasn't my That's fault i was working so they were they're upset at me and then they went bowling i don't think they told me exactly where they tried to ditch me or something i was upset so i i had bought a can of four locos at some point and so i decided i was going to chug it in the car and then yeah. go, like not um while driving of course no not while driving i drove <laughs> the bowling alley and i was like i'm gonna chug this because i can't take it into the bowling alley obviously so I chugged it like in my car before going into the bowling alley and then just, and then that's what happened. There it went. So okay. new Fork Loco was 2011. 2011. January 2011. I said that. Yep. So January 2011. Yep. Huh. So I missed so I don't know why Four Loco sparked my, my, 
brain on this, but something pretty cool happened this weekend to somebody from our extended community. I don't know if anybody is aware of this. Everybody remembers Saul, right? Yes. Saul was an extra at WrestleMania. All right, oh. Saul. Damn it. So if you watch, and I watched it yesterday to see if I, I could find it, like, and I did. Speaking for Loco, Saul. <laughs> yeah, I did find it. If you watch uh, Drew McIntyre's entrance, he's the last person holding up this. If you look at this right-hand side of the TV, he's the last person holding the sword up uh, when he's doing his entrance. So Saul is on camera for about 15, 20 seconds. Like that, and you know, if you know who he is, you know who oh, wow. he is. So yeah, Saul actually, you know, it's a very small role, but he was part of WrestleMania. That's fucking cool, I think. I actually, I really need to tell that to a friend now because I have a friend who Saul is who got him into Schmoda. When I showed him the um, Saul's promo against Brandon Hanna, hmm. uh, he, oh, nice. and he was a big wrestling fan, I was like, yeah, I, I got to check this guy out kind of thing. So I think awesome. if you want to see it, I'm pretty certain it's Rachel Silvestrini put up a uh, screenshot and circled him on if you go on Twitter. So if you if you want to see a picture of him, you can you can find that there. But yeah, I thought that was cool when I heard that, and then I watched it after I knew the fact, and I'm like, oh, that is a hundred percent him. Oh, that's badass, dude. Man, badass. So I'll, like, I got his number at some point during the LA trip, and he texted me like a few days after the whole thing, just saying how much like I don't know, just like an encouraging text or something like that. Like what a just dude. so random, yeah. But like. What I like about Saul, like he showed up on the uh, the football draft stream I did with Chance last year, and like he's so random. But like when you actually meet him in person, like he's very chill, like super super nice, weird but super nice. <laughs> That's how I'd like to be remembered. Weird but super nice. I've only I had positive interactions. <laughs> Um, yep, the fucking dog got the bacon. Dog oh, dog got the bacon. So, uh, Jabroni oh. Alterman actually was at WrestleMania all weekend. I wonder in if in the he... freezing cold. Yeah, so apparently the first night by the end of it was in the 30s. I'm like, that's just ridiculous. Big note. For thank you. Apparently, apparently the last I didn't watch. Juice is like that shorts weather. Yeah. But the, <laughs> the last match of the night apparently went on after like 11 o'clock Eastern time and was in 30 degrees. And like the rock is out there, like basically in a speedo. Yeah, the fact that they're like wearing no clothes in wrestling, it's got to be a little rough in that kind of weather. Right. But, you know, I guess you just got to get yourself jacked up. And yeah. And I'd, I'd be like, I'm taking these hoes in that weather. You yeah, know I mean? I'm taking them. <laughs> we are not oh, fighting. I'm going to go in a warm room with these hoes. We're going to have a lovely time. <laughs> that's just me. That's just me. Just going. Um, excuse me. I don't know if this is still a pulse, but can I, can I get the hoes? Can I get the hoes? <laughs> so I still like the check. Off. Is that still on the board? Is that on the board? Uh, that's what I saw. Did it? Nope. <laughs> so sad, bad news. Savannah, Savannah Comic Con got pushed back a couple months, so I don't know if The Godfather is still showing sure up. I hope so. Uh, but the other thing, I started following him on Instagram. So apparently, on the conventions he does, he does the go- he shows up as the Godfather one day and as Papa Shango on the other ones. Oh, okay. So it depends on when he. I mean, Papa Shango is ridiculous too, which would be hilarious to meet him as that too. But I really want to meet him as the Godfather. Oh yeah, I want those hoes. <laughs> never gets old. It never gets old. Never gets old, y'all. Who oh, you want to come say hi to? I feel like he almost deserves an honorary induction into the chaotic neutral life. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, he needs to give and keeps on giving. Oh hey. Yeah. Oh. Our little toothless oh. puppy. Oh, yeah, she still has some teeth. I still has some. She's been doing very well. She's a very good girl. She got to go visit a friend this weekend while we went bye bye. We missed you terribly, didn't we? Yes. She needs a haircut. She doesn't need a haircut. She's kind of got her email look going on right now. <laughs> but we left her for it. Don't we? Yes, we do. No, oh, thank you. Oh, I got a kiss on oh, camera. Baby girl. That doesn't happen that often. Oh, the baby girl. <laughs> 
Oh, you're real. So, those two. Oh. oh, I actually did two. Back, back in so after WrestleMania eight, it was advertised for a while as Ultimate Warrior against Sid, and Sid quit. So they like there were signs outside the arena. Sid will not be appearing tonight. <laughs> if you would like a refund, go directly to the box office. Who was Sid? Uh, so he was his name it was Sid Justice at the time. He also went to Sid Vicious. He also went to Psycho Sid. He was like a legit main event guy. And this is before all of the angles aired on TV about the Ultimate Warrior and Papa Shango. Papa Shango at this time is kind of considered like you know a lower tier guy, and it's is going to be in the main event of these shows because the main event guy didn't show up. And uh, so the, the they had the, all these signs all over the place. If you, if Sid is not appearing. Sid is not appearing. You can get a refund before the show starts. So then Ultra Warrior fights Papa Shango instead. So this is before everything aired, and then Papa Shango got bigger. But this is before all that happened. I'm gonna have to look up his persona as, as Papa Shango because yep. I've only seen him as the Godfather. So the other thing though, I actually oh. met him years years back. Uh, I went to a side. This is really fucking ironic. So I'm, uh, I won tickets from McDonald's to go to a, a live event, just a house show. And as part of it, they were like, oh, you, there's going to be a meet and greet at the McDonald's. And it's supposed to be Sid. Guess who doesn't show up? <laughs> Sid. So they sent five guys in his place. One of which was Kama Mustafa, who became the godfather. So before he was the Godfather, I actually did meet him in person. So this is Papa Shango. Yes. There you go. The more you know. Show show on screen. <laughs> so here he is, everyone. Yes. Sorry for the play. That's the the man, the myth, the legend. So Papa Shango used to like. No, that's the Iron Sheik. But uh, <laughs> Papa Shango used to curse voodoo spells on people. He made the Ultimate Warrior throw up. He used to make people's like heads ooze. He lit some people on fire. So. <laughs> Man. Yeah, the Godfather is the second most problematic character that, 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 that I play. <laughs> it's just delightful. Which is like, oh, you need a plan. Really saying something. I don't know how long people yeah. <laughs> Somebody, he's past the sneezes to me. Y'all. Wrestling is so great. It's just it's 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 American anime. I mean, at the end of the day, that's. I would like to take up on bridge with. Um, Sorry, everyone. With um, one of our fan, fellow friend of the show, one of the biggest wrestling fans I know, uh, our dear friend Taylor Cleek. I'd like to bring up some quick numbers with him. Okay. Because when we were doing our hair with Brackett, he was trying to tell me that TJ Lavin doesn't have it anymore, that he's not really that good at hosting the challenge anymore. We literally just watched a brand new episode, two just brand new crispy episodes aired today of. The challenge, All Stars. Would you best believe I was hyped that this is what was airing right around my birthday? I was like, "Oh, they've got a new challenge for she my was birthday." She was so excited when she saw the air date. Y'all don't understand my obsession, okay? And let me tell you, that man has still fucking got it, okay? So I don't know what he was watching, but it was not my boy TJ, who yes, we did <laughs> listen to a podcast that he was on on the way up to Virginia because we love it. Uh, but I was like, literally, as they were watching it tonight, I was like, I don't know what Taylor Creek was on about. This is, he's amazing. TJ is amazing. And I just want to go on record and let everyone know that TJ Lavin still has it. Well, you'll you'll have a chance to defend yourself next week. You know what? I freaking will. I'm going to let him know. Because we will Taylor. have another new, fresh, crispy episode of the Challenge All-Stars that I will watch next week before we record. And I'm going to let him know what's up. And Taylor Creek will be on air, so... With uh, we have a, he's going to be our guest next week, so that's perfect timing. Yeah, I'm gonna let him know. Matter of fact, to you, sir, but also TJ Lavin still has it. And uh, while I'm kind of, oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I I don't know when we're doing it. It's going to be soon, but uh, our favorite jabroni was at both nights of WrestleMania. Instead of doing a Jeff watches the classics, we're going to do a show but at some point. Um, Jeff tells the WrestleMania experience. Oh that's yeah, coming up for sure. The Burr that's going to come up. Experience. Yeah, the Burr experience. Right. And he he actually suggested it to me, so that's probably going to be like in a week or two. So we should make. Uh, we should make. We'll have to like make the thumbnail like Jeff. Put the two pictures side by side. Jeff before, <laughs> Jeff after WrestleMania. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> no, the Jeff oh, before is the young one, is the old <laughs> yeah. one, and then the Jeff after is the young one. <laughs> Oh, all right, that's fair. That's fair. It's a yeah. little. It, it was cleansing that cold. It... So that was that was something I actually I thought of. I was telling Bethany about um, some concert experience, but I wanted to ask both of you this: um, What's like the coldest like event you've ever been to? Like an outdoor mm. event, like you know, sporting event, oh, concert, sure gathering, that. whatever. Oh man, um, it's so well, often. I feel like I was gonna say the two of you living where you live. This has to be a a, a common occurrence, right? You so, all. I have a couple of answers. Like the coldest concert's an easy one for me. The coldest concert I ever went to. I saw Jane's Addiction in Virginia on Columbus Day weekend. By the time Jane's Addiction played, it was in the 30s. Uh, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, there have been a couple of like sporting events I've been to that have been like by the time that the game got like into the darkness and stuff that it got really really cold um but like i know that, that, that this is probably the coldest wrestlemania they ever had i know you haven't had too many super cold can't say i've experienced many cold sporting events or concerts growing up in the great state of florida um i would say probably Holy, I'm sure I've been to something that's cold. I'm trying, I'm really trying to think. Like football games, especially like around your guys' neck of the woods, if you go and, and you know, in You've December. probably seen stuff in yeah. the snow. Can't really. I think <laughs> just the, the one Husker football game that I've ever been to was November in Nebraska. So Most of our issues are like rain. Honestly, it wasn't cold when I saw Ed Sheeran in Argentina. But it was like sort of chilly outside, and then it started raining. Right. And then you're wet and kind of cold. And like, thankfully, we were in general admission, so we were just kind of packed in with people. And you're like, oh, it's not so bad. And then you started walking out, and you like start getting the opportunity to not be like crammed in with people. And you're like, this is like cold. I've been wet clothes and cold, chilly. Um, so that was kind of cold. I, I've definitely been to like colder events, but. It's kind of cold. The game we went to in South Carolina was cold. And again, same thing. It started raining. Um, so that didn't help. That was pretty chilly. We did actually leave early because we had my nieces and nephews with us. And we were like, eh, it's raining. Let's just. And we were losing by like 40 points. Um, so we decided to go ahead and head out on that one. But yeah, I don't know. I've been pretty lucky with cold. I can beat y'all probably with the hottest games. Oh, actually, no, I, I do know. I do know when you went to that was cold. We saw Billy Joel in Orlando. That was and cool. we had a bizarre Orlando forty degree night in like March. In March, very weird. And uh, Billy Joel was playing on stage in a beanie. He had and hand warmers. Hand warmers, and uh, yeah, it was. Weird. It was pretty. It was pretty chilly, actually. That's forty right. degrees that in March awesome. sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forty degrees in April sounds fantastic. Sounds so lovely. So it really. Far. It really. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's tough because I've never been to Lambo or I've never been to a Packer game, and I right. uh, and Miller or Miller Park. The Brewers are it's a heated stadium, or uh, they close the roof if it's cold. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dark. dark so. I went to a baseball uh, game once that was really cool. Sorry, carry mm -hmm. on. It just it dawned well, on. I've been to Met games that were in the forties. The, the probably the coldest game I have witnessed was probably like when I was a kid, my older brother, like, or while myself was playing, I'm mm. sure there were some cold games, but I don't remember. But if we would have gone to that Chicago um, game, it would have been in the snow. The Chicago, it, it got yeah. canceled. Stuff. Yeah. Chica yeah. Who only played that Wrigley, night? Wrigley is not okay. indoor, oh, yeah. so. and When we went to the sports bar to watch the Islanders game, the Cubbies were on. Oh, they, oh yeah. That would have been like. But in, it was snowing. Yeah. That would have been frigid. It was April and it was snowing. We went up for star celebration and then we went to the showdown event, obviously in Chicago as well. That was going on that weekend. And it was snowing in April. Which again is not that crazy for Chicago, but like crazy for my brain to wrap around. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it snows in April. Yeah, this April has been other than the past couple of days, this April's been like brutally like we lost power last Monday. Oh wow, really? Brutal storm. Yeah. Dang. Not, no, not a couple days or like 10 days ago. Tomorrow's yeah. going to rain all day. But it's not cool. It's, it's like yeah, in the 70s tomorrow, weird. I think. Yeah, it's, it's like, like rain. Like, 
on your birthday. It's my last two hours as a 32 year old, y'all. I'm soaking it in. That's a hit. We're about an hour away from the big three three. Technically, um, it was born at like 10 a.m. So if you want to, like, you know, but. the big three three. I experienced that eight years ago. So that is true. Yeah, God did write that song. Of, we have some. It is some crazy weather. We're getting. It'll blow in our direction tomorrow, which I'm not looking forward to stormy weather on my birthday. But you yeah. know what? You can't win them all. It's going to be like in the high 70s level. Yeah, I'm going to be at work all day, so it doesn't really matter. Also, my beautiful friend Renee bought me a lovely shirt for my birthday, and she gave it to me today so she they would make sure that I had it for tomorrow, which was very sweet of her. Um, so bless her for that. I will be wearing that tomorrow at work. Very excited for that. And yeah, just hopefully just these storms will just blow on over and it won't be so bad. And we're going to the chocolate chocolate bar. Well, this weekend. This yeah. weekend, yeah. We're gonna go to the chocolate we're bar. We're going to Lulu's. I bet Jake has opinions about it. Um, it's fucking delicious and I love <laughs> it. And y'all can suck it, okay? Like a, we're going like to Lulu's bar? and you know what I'm probably gonna get? An espresso martini. <laughs> and I'm gonna get a dry martini. And I'm going to eat some cheesecake because they have a cheesecake of the day every day at Lulu's. And it is chef's kiss. Phenomenal. I did have a cold story. I can't remember what it was. I was all like all that stuff was leading to a story. And I can't remember what the story was. <laughs> we took you off track, Juice. I'm sorry. No, no. I forgot it before. Like as I was telling like the Lambeau Miller Park stuff, I was like, I don't remember where I'm going with this. I've just been cold. Thank you. Too many times. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, like, I know I, I went to <laughs> lots of events, like, on Long Island. Like, I went to a lot of Islander games, like, in December, November, December, January, February, that, like, going in and out of them were frigid, but it was the events sure. themselves weren't out there. Right, right, right. Again, can I just say, I really think I top y'all for going to the hottest events. <laughs> oh, the hottest events, yeah, there's quite a well, few. That, you, you, you guys are getting it more because, better. like, all our events are indoors because it's right. cold. You guys right. have events outside because it's warm, right. and then all of a sudden it's cold. So, like, uh, I, I went to an outdoor concert series uh, in Nebraska that was like one of the days was like 103 with 100% humidity. So oh, back, that yeah. that's pretty hot. There yeah. was a uh, one of the shows. 100 <laughs> humidity. I went to Ozfest. Yeah, it gets year. humid in Nebraska. I I yeah. have heard. I have heard. I went to the Ozfest every year from 20, 2001 to two thousand eight, and two thousand three, the one in Virginia, with the heat index hit one hundred and twenty, and uh, the band Disturbed came out and they're like, this is like Africa hot. And they actually had to cut their set short. Like they were supposed to play for an hour. They played for like 40 minutes because their, their hit, uh, singer basically had a heat stroke. So like, yeah, I've been to a couple that were brutally hot. I would once again like to pose a question. Why does anyone live in Nebraska? You get the coldest of cold winters, but the hottest of hot summers. There's no, there's no good time. There's no good time of year. I don't know why anyone. There's listens. about three weeks non-consecutive. <laughs> and then you're non like, man, it's worth it. <laughs> no. I get the so wild because like really, really cold states. Most of you are like, well, but they get a more mild summer. But Nebraska right. can't say that. It no. got awful. So like, I just I don't get the yeah. perk. <laughs> it's the the worst of both worlds. Nebraska. Yeah. It's not for Nebraska. everybody. <laughs> The worst yeah, best I, to say, Rado. It's the worst. It's true. Like, I want to be outside the first like month. It's warm, and like yeah. the last month, it's warm. So like, basically, May and September are like the two great They're months. Fine. Yeah. And like, well, June, this June can be July, August. No. No, thank you. I'm gonna be outside in July, November, August. November through April. July and August, there's not very many places you want to be outside. Like, no. if you're in the United if you're States, being honest, yeah, yeah, there's really. Well, not, you're always on. like that late spring. You're like, oh, I'm so excited to like spend so much time outside, and then you're like, 
all right, I've had my fill. <laughs> like now it's now it's hot and I want to anywhere right. but outside. I, I, yeah. I don't think I don't after I sucking I am the summer. person <laughs> bless you who yeah. lives in the god awful heat. I don't ever look for it. I'm like, no, we could just stay. We could just stay like this. We could stay where it's nice. Oh no, it's gonna get miserable. Okay, I guess we're just gonna have to endure it. But I will say the perk of living in Georgia is it's a much shorter window. Now it's like three to four <laughs> as opposed to in Florida, it was like eight to nine months of the year was that. Oh, so Florida is just rural with the heat. We'll take a win. We'll take the W on that. I have lessened my amount of months that I have to suffer. It's September is a great month. What I think December's great. Yeah. I mean, do you remember the 21st night of fire? I saw Wallace Shawn die. Wallace Shawn is dead. It was an Earth, Wind, and Fire.